So, today we're going to talk about my experience vlogging with the new Fujifilm X-T4. I filmed my first vlog while out in the streets of London testing another Fujifilm camera, the X-100V, and I used the Fujifilm X-T4 to record myself. So, how did it go? Well, let's find out. studio and to talk about my experience vlogging with the Fujifilm X-T4. So in the previous video I was out in the streets of London testing the Fujifilm X-100V which is an absolutely amazing premium compact camera and while I was out I thought I would film the whole experience uh, with the X-T4 and test its capabilities. Now the Fujifilm X-T4 is the, the first Fujifilm camera that is explicitly intended for vloggers. It has a flip out screen and it has the in-body image stabilization, which was already available in the X-H1, but this is a brand new system based on magnets. So how did it go? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's start with the flip-out screen. When I pre-ordered the, the Fujifilm X-T4, I thought I would hate it. But it turns out that it's actually pretty helpful uh, to shoot a vlog. And now I wish I had it in the X-T2 that I'm using to film myself now. Uh, because I don't even know if that is recording actually. There's no screen and there's no tally light. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully you can see me. Otherwise I have to record again. Although the flip out screen in the X-T4 actually really helps vlogging. And this camera has a tally light as well. So you always know if you are recording. It's really helpful and the X-T2. They don't have it. And also in the menu, you can increase the text size. So even at arm length, you can always read what's in the menu, which can be really, really helpful. But I still hate the flip screen for still photography. So when I take photos, the flip screen goes in the way of my photography because it slows me down. Because maybe I want to chimp and see what I've shot, or maybe I want to see at a glance all the settings. And the screen is closed, so I need to take it out. Or maybe it's turned for blogging, and so I can't see it again, so I need to take it, turn it again. So it really slows me down. And it only flips, it doesn't tilt. So in some situations, it's more difficult to shoot, like I was used with the X-T2. So for photography, I still don't really like it. Well, let's say I like it, but I don't love it. But here we, I'm talking about the vlogging capabilities of the X-T4 and as a vlogger, the flip out screen is invaluable. It's really, really helpful. The other thing is that when you close it, you protect the screen because the screen is inside of the flip out screen. So it's always protected in the back, which is great. Another issue I had with the flip out screen is that it went completely black with just a couple of raindrops. So I was out in the street because I went out to participate and photograph the protests in, in, the, in the streets and it started drizzling. It wasn't even a proper rain and this camera is weather sealed. But with just two or three raindrops really, I don't know if whether in the viewfinder or, or the screen, everything went black and it was completely unusable so I had to close it and just use the viewfinder. Which is a bit worrying to be honest. So I'll test it again and, and we'll see how that goes. But anyway, let's keep talking about the vlogging features. So let's talk about IBIS. Now the IBIS system on the X-T4 is a completely new system. So it's not based on strains like the other brands or the previous camera, the X-H1, but it's based on magnets. And how this works, I mean, this paired with a lens that has optical image stabilization, like this 10 to 24 that I have uh, plugged in now and that I use for the previous vlog, this should give you uh, six stops recovery, more or less, which is pretty great uh, on paper. I mean, this sounds awesome, right? But when I was out in the street, I noticed that everything was shaking and I, and I was really surprised. So I checked the footage and everything was shaking. I couldn't understand, couldn't understand why. Uh, it was like the, the IBIS wasn't even on. And in fact, it wasn't. And apparently this is considered normal, 
with cameras, with in body image stabilization. And it seems that other brands are doing the same. I know that Nikon does exactly the same. And so basically it's the lens that dictates what the body does. And because the iris was off on the lens, because I tend to leave it off to have sharper images, and I forgot to turn it back on. So because it was off on the lens, the camera thought that I didn't want any image stabilization at all which was incorrect, of course, because I wanted the IBS on the, on the camera. So the lens tricked the camera into thinking I didn't want any image stabilization at all. And personally, even though other brands are doing the same, I don't think this is good user experience because as much as I understand why this is done, I think the decision to switch IBS on and off should be left to the user, to the photographer. But so let me explain. So if I'm shooting with two lenses, say I got the 1024, which is stabilized, and then maybe I want to use the 35mm f2, which is not stabilized, I would rather have consistency of movement rather than one steadier and the other one shakier. So I could turn the stabilization off and on on purpose. Like I could turn the stabilization off on the 10 to 24 to have the same movement that I have with the 35 millimeters, just for consistency. I mean, this could allow me to just use the footage as is because I want that kind of movement and I want it consistent through all the footage, or I could use one adjustment layer to fix the whole footage, whether it's the, with the 35 or the 10 to 24, the movement is consistent because it uses the IBIS and not the optical image stabilization. But I can't, the only way I could do it now as it is with this feature would be to turn it off completely and use a gimbal so it's lens agnostic and I would use the movement of the gimbal only is it correct is it incorrect I don't know is it a bug I don't know apparently all brands do the same but to me if Fuji could add a third option in the menu uh, to use in body stabilization only without the one in the lens for example I mean, that could fix it for me. Now, having said that, when the stabilization works, it is a noticeable improvement on handheld footage. I mean, I come from the X-T2, which wasn't stabilized at all, and I didn't try the X-H1, so this is my first stabilized camera. And I can really, really notice the improvements. It's not a miracle. I mean, you would still need to apply slow movement and be intentionally smoother in the way you walk but it's definitely an improvement i can't compare it with other cameras like i said i didn't own any other stabilized bodies i had only stabilized lenses like the 10 to 24 but it looks to me like it's a good stabilization so i'm happy with it but please fuji just add the third option in the menu uh, i think that if fuji adds a third option to the menu that simply says use the in body stabilization only or use it even if the lens stabilization is off that would fix it i mean it's it's left to the photographer's decision whether to use it or not which to me is a much much better user experience i don't know what do you think let me know in the comments what do you think maybe maybe it's fine by you maybe you you're used to it and you understand why this is done and you're absolutely fine with it and then of course there is the autofocus this really, really works wonders. 99% of the times, the autofocus on the Fujifilm X-T4 is fantastic. It's snappy, it gets everything right immediately, and it has improved a lot since the X-T2 camera, which is the one I'm using now, and I hope that it's focusing on my face consistently. So there is an auto-tracking feature that always looks for your eyes and then switches to your face if it can find your eyes. And even if you put the hand in front of your eyes, it keeps looking for your face or something that's close enough to a face. So that's, that's really good. And it's normally pretty accurate. You can walk around holding your camera and vlog, knowing that the Fujifilm X-T4 will pick up your face easily. But then, if you watch the previous video, you know that something happened. And I put the camera, I sat on a bench, I put the camera on the table, on the mini tripod, it was pointing at me, and it was not a busy scene at all, I mean I had trees on one side, 
fairly distant and I had a concrete wall on the other side and so I thought there's no way that the camera can't understand where my face is but it didn't happen my camera struggled the X-T4 XT, struggled in recognizing my face maybe because I had sunglasses I don't know I saw with other cameras I saw that having polarized lenses on the sunglasses that tricks the autofocus sometimes but yeah, so the camera struggled, it couldn't really focus on my face, it was focusing on the trees behind pretty much the whole time. So I'm glad that actually security came to me and forced me to stop filming and I had to find another place because I can then I could then fix the autofocus and then everything went smooth again. But yeah, I don't understand why this happened, maybe it was the sunglasses, uh, I don't know. But then again, yeah, if you know, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think or you know that the camera struggled with the autofocus in that particular case if it were the sunglasses or something else that would really really help so i talked about the flip screen i talked about the ibis and i talked about the autofocus uh yeah audio so the audio straight out of the camera is okay i think it's pretty usable but if you're recording in a silent room that's fine you should always be able to get away with the sound you get from this body but out in the street i would always use a microphone and the one i used on this one in the in my vlog and the one that's on top of my xt2 now that is recording is the rode micro i do have the rode wireless go as well and i use them in my live streamings but when i go out i use the rode micro because it's a directional microphone so it points at me and it gets me my voice and excludes everything else around so you have no noise around you unless of course somebody is just behind you or next to you so the cap the so the microphone picks that noise as well but that's unfortunate but it's part of the ambient sound so that's fine i'm happy with it and the road micro is actually very very light so it doesn't add any weight to the body at all which is really good when you when you're holding the camera for vlogging now speaking of weight i mean the Fujifilm X-T4 is probably not the lightest of mirrorless cameras. It is heavier than the X-T2 because they had to add IBIS internally, so it's larger and heavier. And on top of it, I've added this small rig bracket, which is also a bit heavy, heavier than any other L brackets. So all in all, it's not the lightest, but it's still not too heavy. It doesn't really feel like a heavy DSLR. It's pretty, I'm pretty happy with holding it comfortably and the mini tripod I use for vlogging is the Manfrotto Pixie Evo which again is very very light and very versatile as well that's why I like it I had I had a Gorilla Pod which is the one that pretty much everybody uses but it broke like I think in the first month so I kind of lost trust in the brand I don't know, maybe it's good for everybody and it's a great tripod, but it didn't work for me. So I'm happy with the Manfrotto Pixie tripod and the Evo version extends a little bit as well. So you can have the camera further away from you. And on top of the tripod, I have a panoramic head as well. Uh, this one is compatible with Arca Swiss plates and it's very handy because I can simply turn the camera on the head if I want to film something that is happening in front of me without having to touch the tripod at all. So the tripod is slightly angled when I have my arm stretched and the camera on top. I just need to twist the panoramic head and I can turn the camera straight away without having to touch the tripod, which is pretty convenient, I would say. And this panoramic head is a cheap one I bought on Amazon. And there are more expensive options as well, but this is really good for me. So I'm going to put links to everything I talked about in the description below. So just go and check those if you're interested in some of the products. So while all the single pieces, they light, uh, maybe all together, they make for quite a good exercise. And well, you can tell I need some exercise. So that's good. More vlogging, more exercise. Now, jokes aside, vlogging with the Fujifilm X-T4 has been pretty good overall. And I had a couple of issues, like I just explained, which were mostly due to my experience, I think. But once you go past those, it's actually a great camera to vlog. And yeah, maybe it's not the lightest, but it's still pretty light. It has the flip out screen, which is great. And it has image stabilization that works when you know how it works. 
I, in fact, I'm, I'm really happy with the upgrade from the XC2 I'm using right now because now I have everything I need in one body. So all the things I love in the XT series, in the Fujifilm XT series for my photography, are now paired with great video and vlogging features. Yeah, so one of the excuses I always had for myself to not start a YouTube channel was that I was so focused on my photography that I was afraid of missing a shot because I would have to change gear, fiddle with the menus, record and then do it all again in reverse and then change again to the ne for the next video. But with the X-T4, everything is only one switch away. So I only need to switch a lever, which is here. Uh, this camera has two separate modes, one for both, one for photo and one for video, and uh, really one switch away. Both modes have their own menu. Everything is customizable and everything is customized and the camera retains the preferences for the photo menu and for the video mode. I mean, it really couldn't be simpler. Oh, again, Fujifilm are not sponsoring my videos in any way, shape or form. So all these opinions are my own. This is all gear that I purchased and then I use regularly as a photographer. I shoot Fujifilm all the time. I purchase Fujifilm gear all the time because I love it. It's, it's great for me, works for my photography and I absolutely love it. So I guess this is it with my initial vlogging experience with the Fujifilm X-T4 and since the vlog just started I will share again my experience later if anything changes. And if you don't want to miss any of the updates please consider subscribing and hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos and when I go live with my streamings. Also there will be some post-production editing sessions as well. I will post videos on editing with Lumina, Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One. And so the more subscribers this channel has, the more people I can help with those and the more you can help this channel grow. So thank you, thank you all very much. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!